Line of defense against COVID-19 is headed to Shasta County. The Merck COVID-19 pill is set to arrive next week. Action News Now reporter Jordan Henry is live at Shasta Community Health Center. So Jordan, what are you learning about this pill's arrival? Shasta Community Health Center will be one of the first to get the Merck COVID-19 pill next week, but they'll only get 20 pills because of manufacturing and distribution. The Merck pill got full approval from the FDA last week. They're not a pre-infection treatment like the vaccine. These pills are for high-risk, already infected people. Laura Dugan, Deputy Chief Operating Officer, says Shasta Community Health was one of the lucky ones to get the COVID-19 pill. She expects more pills to be available soon. Especially based on availability of this medication, it's going to be really your most high-risk patients. So those that are at risk of severe illness or death due to COVID. Those are the folks that we want to get this in their hands, get them taking it and hopefully see quick recovery from COVID. Anything that we have that helps is a good thing. You know, we want to get vaccinated, of course, but if we're not able to for some reason, if we choose not to, then this is a good alternative for people that really are just afraid at home, waiting to get sick enough to go to the hospital. So Those maybe this is something that will... for five days in total. Live in Reading, Jordan Henry, Action News Now, coverage you can count on. Dugan tells Action News, thank you, Jordan, by the way. Dugan tells Action News now that people should still get vaccinated because it's the best way to prevent COVID-19. Well, Action News now is tracking the spread of the coronavirus in our area. Butte County reported three new deaths today, along with 114 new cases. Shasta County reported 32 new cases, no deaths. Tehama County, 21 new cases. We now know the Omicron variant is in our area. And today I spoke with Enlo Chief Medical Officer Dr. Marcia Nelson, who says it's too soon to tell whether Omicron is less dangerous than previous variants like Delta. But we do know the hospitalization at Enlo Medical Center, that rate is up 75% since last week. And Omicron does not necessarily mean an end to Delta, she tells me, but it could become more dominant here. We're seeing certain variants be able to outcompete the others. It's kind of like who's the biggest bully on the schoolyard. And when there when there's a very um, when there's a variant that very effectively transmits to other people, then it will outcompete the others. It'll be the biggest bully on the schoolyard. Okay. And so very definitely there can be more than one variant coexisting at the same time until and unless it gets outcompeted by the stronger one. Okay. Um, in terms of being infected by two at the same time, I think that would be unlikely. I don't know if it's impossible, but I think that would be highly unlikely. Good thing too. Nelson says vaccination is your best bet right now. Uh, and she says that even if you've been sick with a previous variant, it may not give protection against one like Omicron. She says once you get that last dose though of the vaccine, you're considered fully protected after about two weeks. Today, hundreds of people went home with free at-home testing kits in Reading. This is all thanks to the Sikh Cultural Center and Shasta County citizens advocating respect. It was part of their seventh vaccine clinic. Most people at the clinic that we spoke with said they rushed to get the testing kits with the Omicron variant detected in Shasta County yesterday, reported yesterday. Clinic organizers say they work on getting more testing kits. They're working on it, but other community organizations and pharmacies will have some as well. And we continue tracking winter weather across our area. This is a time-lapse video over Lake Almanor today. Pretty chilly out there. A few little looks at the blue sky, though, emerging as those clouds roll through. Our Chief Meteorologist Jason Stiff joins us now as we head towards the last day of the year. Jason, how is that looking? Looking pretty good. We're going to have quieter weather tomorrow for most areas. Some breezes will be in our forecast for Friday afternoon, but we'll also have some more sunshine. We're already losing a lot of the clouds, but we still have a chance for some more snow showers. There's a little disturbance moving toward northeastern California, one of those inside slider storms that's going to give us the best chance for some snow showers to Modoc County. To a lesser extent, Lassen County, we have a winter weather advisory for Modoc County through 4 o'clock tomorrow. Not so much because it's going to snow a lot. We're only 
up one to two inches, but a lot of gusty wind blowing that snow around, so reduced visibility. And we'll also have a few more light snow and rain showers possible tonight through early tomorrow. Lassen County, Plumas, even far eastern Butte County will have a little bit of shower activity. You'll probably not even notice it because it's going to be overnight tonight and nothing compared to what we've had recently. That clearing means a chilly start tomorrow morning, some frost as well as some fog. Details about that and what the first week of 2020 looks to looks like coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Jason. Now, breaking today from Trinity County, that county declared a state of emergency due to the recent winter storm damage. Affected residents are asked to contact the American Red Cross for disaster assistance. The city of Chico is working to repair an iconic bridge battered by the impact of the recent stormy weather. This is the bridge at Five Mile Recreation Area in Bidwell Park. You can see a lot of damage there. Today, Action News now spoke with the Public Works Director, Eric Gustafson, about the extent of the damage and what it will take to open up that bridge again. Maintain a situational awareness, um, especially on a windy day and when we have a lot of ground saturation from, from lots of rain prior to the wind or during the wind, that always causes us some concern. Uh, we do everything we can to keep an eye on trees in the park, especially over highly traveled areas, but you never know. You know, the majority of Bidwell Park is, is vast open space. Gustafson says crews used a crane to clear the tree from the bridge and do not believe there is any structural damage, but they plan to investigate further before reopening the bridge, and that could take a couple of weeks. Right now, the Reading Police Department is asking for help in getting more information about a drive-by shooting. Take a look at this. Caught on camera. This happened early Tuesday morning. You can see the car drive by this house in the 2800 block of Lanning Avenue, and then a minute later... It drives by and fires five shots into the side of the home. Then you see the same vehicle again on Polk Street, just south of where the shooting occurred. Neighbors were surprised to hear the incident in their otherwise quiet neighborhood. Um, I mean, I was laying in bed, my girlfriend was asleep. I was about to fall asleep and then uh, I just heard five to six gunshots. I knew they were definitely close. Nothing like that's really ever happened in this neighborhood before. So I was definitely caught off guard and surprised to actually hear that happen. Reading Police is asking anyone with information about this uh, incident on Landing Avenue to give them a call at 530-225-4200. A Westwood man was sentenced to more than 12 years in prison for a burglary. Officials say it caused tens of thousands of dollars in property damage. Prosecutors say this man, Ryan Bauer, broke a glass door to gain entry and barricaded himself inside. Bauer pleaded guilty to false imprisonment, vandalism, resisting arrest, battery and trespassing. Two Butte County Supervisors are calling for an independent redistricting plan. This means an independent commission would be in charge of redrawing the lines for the county instead of supervisors in the future. This comes after supervisors voted to use Map A5C for Butte County, which was drawn by Todd Kimmelshu and his wife. He's a supervisor. Supervisors Ritter and Lucero believe it goes against the Fair Maps Act, and they are calling for a November 2022 ballot measure so Butte County voters can create a redistricting commission for the next time they have to draw those lines. That would be after the next census, 10 years. So what we would like to have everyone know is that on January 11th at our next board meeting, we will ask to agendize this topic. We will ask the staff to come back with options for our board so that we can learn what other counties are doing and how this will be done. Ritter and Lucero have also been working on a referendum in hopes of getting map A5C onto the June 7th ballot. If enough signatures are collected and validated by the county clerk recorder, the Board of Supervisors can also decide to rescind the ordinance. The new Shasta County Courthouse is nearing completion. Construction is expected to be finished by June. But it will take some time before the courthouse opens to the public. That's because it will take time to transfer operations from the current courthouse to the new one. We'll gradually open up the building for certain um, services and case types. And then it will probably take us about a month before we get everything completely over into the new courthouse. Fowler Bradley says there are plans for a dedication ceremony. Construction on the new courthouse broke ground in 2019. Stuck in snow, coming up a look at a life-saving rescue caught on camera. Plus the winter storm taking a toll on local ice rinks. So look at the challenges ahead. That's straight ahead on Action News Now. The story was very confusing. Oh yeah. It was missing.
Well, wait. What do you mean? No, but I, 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 well, when you say to be aware of, like, I don't hear it, do you want me to switch mics? Do you want me to, like, you think I'm moving? Why don't I just switch mics? Doesn't, okay. Okay. <laughs> just talk better. I don't have to be aware. Your voice sounds awful. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> can you, uh, I'm going to use fourth mic and could you, uh, your lost. What was this thing called? I have feet. Your what? Your what? Your thing? Uh, two skiers came to the rescue when their friends got buried in the snow. We'll show you how it all went down. Two skiers came to the rescue when their friend got buried and stuck in snow while skiing at Palisades Tahoe. The dramatic rescue, likely saving him from suffocating, was caught on their helmet cams. As Julie Watts reports, it's a sobering message to be careful out there. Drop! Professional skier Josh Gold was out taking advantage of the deep powder yesterday following the series of you recent bud. storms filming tricks with a group of friends inbound at Palisades Tahoe. Josh's helmet cam captures his buddy Jeremy Pascal landing in the deep snow. At first, like, it, it seemed like everything was fine. He landed as he should normally. But then he noticed Jeremy's feet swooped up and his head buried. Yo, he's buried, he's buried, he's buried. You can't really tell on the POV footage, but I can see his leg kick and he's trying to kick himself up and it's not working. This is a perspective from Jeremy's point of view. He's stuck in my head. So then I started trying to blow a hole so I could breathe, but that didn't work either. So then I thought after like 20 seconds, I thought, all right, just chill out. Don't use energy so I don't breathe as much. Lucky for him, they were skiing in a group. It took two men to dig him out. Their friend Duke got to him first. I noticed that Duke couldn't get him out alone. So I came down Deeper around to help safe. start digging for him. Josh says snow immersion suffocation, or SIS, is very common, usually near tree beds, but with this much snow, the risk can be anywhere. <laughs> pull, pull, pull. Keep pulling. And while this close call makes for a good story and some great video, they hope it leaves a lasting impression on everyone who sees it. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, like, it, it can happen to anyone. That was Julie Watts reporting. It's been almost three weeks since Anderson's new synthetic ice rink opened up, but because of the winter storms, the rink has been closed for several days. But the city says it's expected that the cold and wet, it did expect the cold and wet weather to impact the rink. And despite the challenges, the rink brought in more than 1,300 skaters. It's hard to uh, get the momentum rolling on excitement when uh, it starts later than you want it to and then uh, weather isn't as great as you want it to be. Uh, but it's also not a huge surprise. We know that with an ice rink that's open in the middle of the winter, uh, you know, you're going to have this kind of stuff. The city is hoping to have the rink open during the weekends in January and is working on the final details. As for the ice rink in Paradise, the manager there tells Action News now weather forced them to close the rink for 8 to 10 days this season, which is more than usual, but they do hope to reopen for three more days of operation before shutting down due to snow. Heavy rainfall also taking a toll on Southern California. Coming up, a look at flooding that forced evacuations today. You know, all the rain and snow that we've received has really done a good job on our drought. Still 100% of the state in drought status. However, the darkest red color, the worst drought category, exceptional drought, it was 23 plus percent last week. Now, less than 1% just in our backyard in Siskiyou and Modoc counties. Let you know when the next round of rain and snow is going to get here. And your forecast for news coming up.
You're watching Action News Now. Storm Tracker weather. Coverage you can count on. Here's a time lapse video over Mount Shasta Ski Park today. Not a. Well, actually, you can see skiers and snowboarders out there, even though it looks uh, pretty, pretty hazy. It kind of looks a little scary. A lot of snow. Yeah. Whatever the case is, a lot of snow on the yeah. ground. Not so much just a few weeks ago. Jason joins us now from the Storm Tracker Weather Center. Uh, more snow to come, Jason? Yeah, we're going to have more chances going forward. More than likely, we're going to have to wait until the new year starts, but that's not too far away. Things are fairly quiet right now, and there is another disturbance moving our way. I mentioned earlier, we have that winter weather advisory for most of Modoc County through 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon because of a lot of gusty wind and a little bit of snow. Right now in Alturas, 20 nine degrees, 23 degrees for Chester. It's 40 degrees in Paradise, 44 degrees in Redding and 48 degrees in Chico already beginning to cool down. We still have a lot of clouds outside, but we don't have a lot of wind just yet. Everybody has wind less than 10 miles an hour, but when that next disturbance moves in, we'll have a lot of strong wind around Modoc and northern Lassen County, and we'll have some breezes for everybody else between 15 and 25 miles an hour. High clouds are moving overhead, but for the most part, fairly dry weather for us. No rain and snow bearing clouds. We'll have a slight chance of some snow showers late tonight through early tomorrow for Modoc and Lassen counties. Same thing overnight tonight. We'll have a few rain showers and snow showers trying to fall right around the Plumas and Butte County line, but nothing compared to what we've already received by tomorrow morning. A chilly start to the final day of 2021. Definitely some frost here and there. We'll have some areas of fog in the northern mountains, but overall a mostly sunny Friday and final day of the year. Also a mostly sunny beginning to 2022 with a ridge of high pressure in control of our weather, but that too will be short-lived because yet another Pacific storm in this active weather pattern will start moving our way on Sunday, expecting a fairly dry day on Sunday, but increasing clouds throughout the day. And then Monday and Tuesday, here comes the next good chance for valley rain. We'll have more mountain snow and stronger wind, most places between 20 and 30 mile an hour gusts, but the sustained wind between 15 and 25. One thing you'll notice though with this incoming storm, storm system, less snow falling in the mountains. We're going to have a little bit higher snow levels instead of two to 3,000 feet, more likely six to 7,000 feet. So we'll have some rain over some of the snowy ground, but it won't be very heavy rain. And we'll also have less wind blowing overhead by next Wednesday and Thursday. So amounts of precipitation we're expecting. No rain in the valley for the first few days, a little bit of precipitation for the mountains. But then when we get to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, upwards of a half inch to an inch of rain possible. I think this is a little bit underdone for the valley and we'll still have more precipitation for the mountains, but not as much snow as we've had in previous storms. Very little occurring before Sunday night and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday will have upwards of a couple feet of snow in the highest elevations. Nothing like the four to five to six feet of snow that we've had in previous storms. So here's your forecast for the final day of 2021. Chilly with some areas of fog over those higher elevation valleys in the northern mountains. Highs tomorrow being the 30s and lower 40s. Cold tonight with some scattered snow showers in northeastern California. Lows in the teens and 20s with highs in the 30s and lower 40s. A slight chance for some light showers over the ridge tonight and early tomorrow, but very little is going to fall. Lows in the upper 20s and lower to mid 30s. Highs slightly warmer today in the upper 30s and lower to mid 40s. Cold tonight though for the valley with some patchy fog, areas of frost. Lows in the upper 20s and lower 30s. Highs tomorrow in the upper 40s and lower 50s, but still about six degrees cooler than average for the final day of the year. And for Butte and Glen counties, lows tonight in the 30s with some patchy fog, areas of frost. So make sure you bring your pets inside. Highs, upper 40s and lower 50s for December 31st. How about January 1st? Looking pretty good. Mostly sunny with a high of 48 degrees in Chico. Better chances for rain and gusty wind also next week. And the temperatures will slightly rise. For the Redding area, cold overnight lows and a below average daytime highs with more good chances for rain and mountain snow starting Monday. A Malibu campground had to be evacuated today after a strong storm brought steady rain to Southern California. The storm brought buckets of rain to the area, completely flooding the campground. Cars and trucks were partially submerged in the rising water. Some sought higher ground while firefighters and lifeguards helped others evacuate, but there have been no reports of injuries. COVID continues to shake up the NBA. A look at the latest game postponed straight ahead on Action News Now.
The coronavirus continues to shake up the NBA. The Golden State Warriors and Denver Nuggets game scheduled for tonight. Well, that's postponed. The NBA announced earlier today that the Nuggets don't have eight eligible players necessary to play. The announcement came just hours before tip-off. This is the 11th game to be postponed this season. The Minnesota Vikings traveled to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay Packers in this week's Sunday night football matchup. The Packers head into the one on a four game winning streak with a record of 12 and three, the best in the NFC. The Vikings were the only team to beat the Packers in Green Bay last season with a 28 to 22 win. College football is ready to cap off 2021 with two of the biggest games of the year. The playoff semifinal matchups kick off tomorrow. The Georgia Bulldogs are in Miami preparing for the Orange Bowl. The SEC East champions will take on Michigan Wolverines of the Big Ten. Also happening tomorrow, Alabama faces Cincinnati in Texas. So far, several bowl games have been canceled because of COVID outbreaks. UGA head coach Kirby Smart says his team dealt with some COVID issues weeks ago, but he expects to have nearly all of his players ready for tomorrow night's game. A mountain lion spotting in one local area will let you know where you need to be on alert. Straight ahead on Action News Now. Caught on camera, a mountain lion spotted in Whiskey Town National Recreation Area. Take a look at this. A backcountry wildlife camera snapped the photo recently. They are the state's top predator, well, after us humans. Fish and Wildlife says their huge paws, long claws, and incredibly sharp teeth make them fierce hunters. To protect yourself and loved ones while in mountain lion country, keep your dogs on a leash and keep your children close to you. Yeah, I don't ever want to encounter a mountain lion. Chief Meteorologist Jason Siff is joining us now with one last check of the forecast. It looks like that mountain lion was just posing for a senior it's photo. beautiful. It's like, oh, <laughs> look over there, yeah. Probably just a senior photo, so it's fine. But anyway, just make sure you're careful. We're gonna have fewer and fewer clouds late tonight through early tomorrow. It's gonna be chilly in the valley by midnight tonight, dropping down to the mid 30s. We're gonna have lows in the upper 20s and lower 30s tomorrow. A chilly start to the final day of the year. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you back here tonight on Action News Now.
A cold start to the last day of the year. I'll have your forecast at 11.
Yeah, um, this isn't the uh, Eve Knight cut-ins that's loaded. Tonight on Action News Now, newly approved antiviral COVID-19 pills are arriving in our area. We'll tell you when. And an update on when this tree-damaged bridge at Five Mile Hidwell Park will reopen. Join us for Action News Now at 11. Tonight on Action News Now, calling into question the entire redistricting process. We'll tell you about the proposal announced in one local county this afternoon. And a local drive-by shooting caught on camera. And now police need your help. Join us tonight at 11. I'm Alan Mars, and here are some of the stories we're working to bring you tonight on CW Action News Now at 10. Calling into question the entire redistricting process, we'll tell you about the proposal announced in one local county this afternoon. And a local drive-by shooting caught on camera, and now police need your help. Also, an update on when this tree-damaged bridge at Five Mile in Bidwell Park will be open. Those stories plus your New Year's weekend forecast tonight at 11.
Mic check, one, two, one, two. Buenos días, les saluda Janely Pedrosa. La píldora de COVID-19 de Merck está configurada para llegar al condado de Shasta la próxima semana. El Centro de Salud Comunitario de Shasta, conocido como el Shasta Community Health Center, será uno de los primeros en obtener la píldora de Merck. La píldora fue aprobada la semana pasada y estas píldoras tratarán el COVID-19 una vez que una persona sea infectada. Más detalles hoy a las 6. Esta noche en Acción Noticiero Telemundo, el FDA advierte que las pruebas rápidas podrían dar falsos resultados. Y hoy el Departamento de Recursos Hídricos del Estado realizó la primera encuesta de nieve de la temporada. Y diremos cuál es el propósito de esto. Además, fiscales de nuestra área aplauden una decisión de un juez en relación a delincuentes. Cubriendo el norte de California, estás viendo Acción Noticiero Telemundo, cobertura en la que puedes confiar. Hola, muy buenas noches. Les saluda Chanely Pedrosa. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos el día de hoy. El Departamento de Salud Pública del Condado de Shasta reportó cuatro casos de la variante Omicron. Las pruebas positivas se hicieron el 16 de diciembre hace dos semanas. El departamento no pudo decirnos el estado de vacunación de los cuatro casos, pero le urgen a la comunidad que se vacunen, usen su máscara, evite grandes reuniones en interiores y quedarse en casa si se siente enfermo. 
el FDA está advirtiendo que las pruebas de rápidas de antígeno podrían no detectar la variante Omicron. En un estudio encontró que las pruebas rápidas pueden ser menos efectivas en detectar la variante y esto podría resultar en un resultado negativo falso. El FDA todavía recomienda hacerse pruebas y dice que si, si, si tiene síntomas, pero la prueba es negativa en una prueba rápida, busque una prueba PCR para estar seguro. Y sin duda, en el 2021 no pudimos escaparnos del coronavirus y Beth Machine nos hace un recuento de todo lo que sucedió con la pandemia en Estados Unidos en los primeros seis meses del año. Después de un año realmente negro, el 2021 comenzó con la preocupación de los expertos por la lentitud del proceso de vacunación y el aumento de las variantes, así como también los casos de niños con el síndrome inflamatorio asociado al COVID-19. La situación con las vacunas fue tan grave que en varios estados las autoridades de salud se vieron obligadas a cerrar muchos centros de vacunación y cancelar decenas de miles de citas. El gobierno federal pidió a todos los estados acelerar la vacunación de personas mayores de 65 años y otros grupos de alto riesgo. En partes de California, la cantidad de fallecidos llegó a ser tan alta que se tuvieron que suspender las cremaciones para poder procesar los casi 3.000 cadáveres almacenados en hospitales y funerarias. A finales de enero, varias personas sufrieron reacciones alérgicas tras ser vacunadas con la inyección de Moderna. La aplicación de la dosis tuvo que ser retrasada temporalmente. En febrero, Estados Unidos alcanzó la cifra de medio millón de muertos, la más alta del mundo en ese momento. En este mismo mes, se destapó el escándalo en torno al entonces gobernador de Nueva York, Andrew Cuomo, y a su equipo de trabajo por ocultar las muertes en hogares de ancianos, mientras llegaba una cuarta ola de contagios. Entre tanto, comenzaban las protestas de trabajadores opuestos a los mandatos de la inmunización. En el mes de marzo, la farmacéutica Pfizer anunciaba que su vacuna era 100% efectiva y segura en niños a partir de 12 años y en varios estados como Nueva York, los mayores de 50 podían empezar a vacunarse. El día 11 se cumplía un año desde que la Organización Mundial de la Salud declarara el COVID-19 como una pandemia. También, durante ese mes, por primera vez, los Centros para el Control y Prevención de Enfermedades daban a conocer la guía para, entre otras cosas, que las personas totalmente vacunadas pudieran visitar a otros vacunados y reunirse con personas no vacunadas de bajo riesgo, sin usar mascarillas ni mantener distancia social. Días después comenzó la distribución de la vacuna de Johnson Johnson. Llegó abril y con él disminuía notablemente la cantidad de personas que acudían a aplicarse la primera dosis de la vacuna. Entre tanto, se reportó el primer caso de un hombre con un coágulo de sangre a pocos días de recibir la vacuna de Johnson Johnson. Hasta ese entonces, solo mujeres habían sido afectadas. Apenas días antes y después de varios días de suspensión, las autoridades de salud reanudaron el uso de dicha vacuna, asegurando que el beneficio es mucho mayor que el riesgo. En mayo, se relajaron muchas de las últimas restricciones impuestas desde el 2020, como poder servir a los clientes en bares y restaurantes después de la medianoche. Los CDC investigaron casos de varios adolescentes que desarrollaron inflamación del corazón después de recibir su segunda dosis de la vacuna. Y de manera sorpresiva, la misma agencia anunció que las personas completamente vacunadas ya no tendrían que usar mascarillas en interiores en la mayoría de los lugares. Entre tanto, la FDA aprobó el uso de emergencia de la vacuna de Pfizer en niños de entre 12 y 15 años. Y las campañas de vacunación en algunos estados como Maryland y Ohio se intensificaron al punto de regalar hasta un millón de dólares semanales en una lotería a los residentes que se vacunaran. Justo en la mitad del año, ya la variante Delta corría como pólvora en todo el país, mientras Pfizer comenzaba los ensayos clínicos de la vacuna en niños de entre 5 y 11 años. Iber Machín, Telemundo. El Departamento de Salud Pública del Condado de Chajema está advirtiendo sobre un incremento del virus respiratorio sin sitial. Al momento, el virus está afectando a todas las personas sin importar su edad. Los expertos de salud dicen que, por lo general, el virus causa síntomas leves y síntomas similares a un resfriado en los adultos. Los expertos también dicen que la mayoría de las personas se recuperan en una semana o dos, pero podría crear dificultad entre personas mayores y bebés. Los bebés pueden experimentar síntomas como irritabilidad e incluso apnea, lo que significa que podrían dejar de respirar. 
El virus también puede liderar a bronquitis y neumonía. Llame a su médico si cree que usted o su hijo o hija podrían tener el virus. Hoy el Departamento de Recursos Hídricos de California realizó la primera encuesta de nieve de la temporada. Sucedió en la estación Phillips cerca del lago Tahoe. El Departamento de Recursos Hídricos midió el contenido de agua en la nieve y la estación Phillips es una de más de 260 ubicaciones a través de la sierra que el distrito mide manualmente cuatro veces al año. Estos datos ayudarán a predecir la cantidad de agua que se derretirá y que irá a los depósitos estatales. Ahora pasamos al otro lado del estudio para el primer vistazo del tiempo. Y bueno, aquí les tenemos un vistazo de esas temperaturas mínimas que usted puede esperar esta noche. Si usted vive en el valle, puede esperar temperaturas mayormente en esos 30 grados, aquí puede ver, pero también en esos 20 grados. Y si usted vive en la zona de las montañas aquí, esas temperaturas van a estar más bajas, así que puede esperar condiciones bastante frías. Y para mañana, si usted vive en el valle, puede ver aquí que usted puede esperar condiciones secas y condiciones soleadas también, pero esas temperaturas van a seguir bastante bajas, mayormente en esos 40 y también 30 grados. Y para usted que vive en la zona de las montañas, aquí también usted puede esperar condiciones secas también. Esa lluvia no va a regresar hasta la próxima semana y por supuesto aquí esas temperaturas van a estar bastante bajas, mayormente en esos altos y también bajos 20 grados. Y bueno, ahora regresamos con más noticias locales. Les tendré más información del clima más adelante. Tenemos novedades del proyecto de almacenamiento de agua. El proyecto está diseñado para aumentar nuestro almacenamiento de agua en el norte de California y los organizadores quieren su opinión sobre el proyecto. El depósito estaría ubicado al oeste de Maxwell en el condado de Calusa y capturará agua de tormenta del río Sacramento para luego ser liberada en tiempos de sequía. El periodo de comentarios públicos del proyecto se ha extendido hasta el 28 de enero del próximo año y tenemos el enlace en actionnewsnow.com diagonal links. Fiscales de nuestra área están aplaudiendo una decisión de un juez en relación a delincuentes. Un juez decidió detener temporalmente los planes del Estado de liberar delincuentes repetidores de prisiones más temprano. Los funcionarios de correcciones de California habían presentado regulaciones de emergencia para aumentar los créditos de buena